Hello and welcome back to the Kitchen Table Models Workshop. My name's Ian, this is my kitchen table where I do all my modelling. So, uh, another video for you today and it is, if you look over my shoulder, going to be uh, an in-the-box review and sprue tour of uh, Hobby Boss's quite reasonably new tooled IDF Puma AEV, which stands for Armoured Engineer Vehicle. Um, obviously I have a bit of a passion for um, Armoured Engineer or Combat Engineer Vehicles and I also have quite a, an interest in the Israeli Defence Force vehicles um, purely because of their inventiveness and ability to reuse old, um, out-of-date vehicle hulls and convert them into something useful for the modern battlefield. So this is a vehicle based on the old Centurion uh, main battle tank hulls and it's been repurposed into an engineer's vehicle with mine roller and a rocket thrown device on the rear. Enough waffling from me, um, I could talk for ages about these things but I have been waffling quite a bit. Let's get the box on the table, let's have a look inside and see what we get. Okay, so we are on the table and again, first off box art, we've got uh, an action pose, I have to apologise for the glare, we've got an action pose that depicts the vehicle in use, all buttoned up, that's possibly an exercise, operations maybe, and I have to say it really does Gonna fire you up to want to get this one on the bench and built. Um, lots of interesting things going on. We've also got the mine roller here, we've got the rockets here, and we've also got illuminated um, uh, GPMGs or machine guns for close in support. Uh, so, if we look at the details on the kit, we've got uh, a length of 343 uh, millimeters and a width of 133 millimeters. Um, we've got for ages 14 and over, uh, 135th scale static kit, detailed scale kit for adult collectors to assemble. Actual model uh, may vary from images and box, which we all know that anyway. Um, on the side, we have quite a nice um, CAD drawing. We've got the vehicle overall, we've got weapon systems and the rockets, the mine roller and then some storage items and also some details of the final drive and drive sprocket as well as the road wheels. So we've got kit number, I still haven't got a kit number, so it came out in 2019, so saying reasonably um, new release, but it's new to me. If you want to pause that, you can look at the information on the side of the box. Uh, here's the end of the box, so we've got kit number 84546 and then on this side we've got a couple of the images of how this thing obviously the Sinai Grey with the vehicle markings we have a significant number of vehicle markings and decals and we've also got a photo etch set so, and on the other end we've just got the same image, image as the box top it's a huge box, I have to say, and it's a really sturdy box. And if you've watched my Meng review for the F18E, you'll have seen that having a sturdy box is advantageous when you get problems in the post. So let's have a look inside. Now, a Hobby Boss do quite a lot of um, IDF vehicles based on the Centurion chassis, so I'd imagine there'll be some common parts throughout this kit from all the different types of kit but obviously because it's a specialist vehicle um, that they will they do do the Puma but there will obviously be some parts that are actually just for this vehicle so you can see it's absolutely rammed with parts so we'll go through the instructions first and then we'll look at the sprues on an individual basis so there's the color call out sheet um, we've got Mr Hobby um, Acrison, Vallejo, Model Master, Tamiya, Humbrol. So you've got a good selection of colours and what, you know, like for example, if you're using Tamiya, then for the Sinai Grey, it's a 50-50 mix of uh, Khaki and XF22. So, um, yeah, lovely overall uh, colour pattern. See the overall plan view, we've got the mine roller, rocket throwing device on the back, and then all the different areas of the vehicle. So it does look very, very interesting. So, the usual 
bit on the front. If we go to the next page in, we have got the sprue map, so quite a number of different sprues, and then we go straight into construction. Uh, road wheels, idler sprocket, drive sprocket, rear hull plate, spare track, lights, and this is the horseman suspension I think it was that was used on the Centurions. Quite a long lived tank chassis developed in the late 40s, early 50s. So we've got lower hull, suspension unit going on, rear plate going on, final drives. These will be bump stops possibly for the suspension. Return rollers, road wheels, front lower glasses plate. Those will be wire hoops for accessing the vehicle and then individual link tracks. Now these will not be um, movable tracks, they'll, they'll, they'll be gluable. I've built a number of the Hobby Boss uh, Centurious base vehicles and they're, they're gluable tracks but they, they glue very very well, minimal cleanup, easy to put together um, so they're not a huge problem. From there we're moving on to track guard with storage items following on through to the opposite side track guard Finishing off the track guards, um, we have another item there, they don't tell you what it is. Track guards going on. Now the beauty with this sort of construction is you can actually paint detail on weather, the whole lower hull, and then you can paint the underside of the track guards and then you can glue it together and then you can actually move on and mask off the, the lower tracks and then move on and, and paint and detail the upper hull. So it does lend itself very well to a modular construction. Um, close in support weapon systems, so you've got the machine guns times two, and then we're moving on to the upper hull crew access area. Hatches, they look to be movable, doesn't tell you not to cement, but knowing Hobby Boss, there's a good chance these hatches may be operational. So if you get yourself some figures, if you want to make a diorama or a vignette, then you can do that no problem at all. Another close-in support weapon, all that being fastened to the top. Now in reality you probably will paint and detail this first and then affix these guns so you don't knock and stuff off. There's lots and lots of small items that could quite easily be knocked off through and painting and weathering. These here are the smoke discharges. It's not a very clear picture but you have optional parts. So you can either have the canvas cover or you can have the discharges uh, with the canisters showing. So again, they're kind of duck egg blue colour, then that adds more interest to the vehicle if you have them showing it's just another colour on the vehicle. Okay, so we've got rear stowage cage going on the, the rear engine deck and obviously the, the upper hull plate, front glasses plate, it's all one part which is great so that'll make easy construction. Um, exhausts and no exhaust covers going on, um, drivers uh, viewing ports and then You've got the crew access area going down onto the upper hull hatch, which then goes down onto the hull itself. So as you can see, this is going to be quite an impressive vehicle just on its own, and that's not even got the mine roller or the rocket of throwing device fixed. You've got driver's hatch here. It does say do not cement, so you know that can be posed open or closed, however you would like. So that's part 21, so it's quite a lengthy construction already. So final bits going on the upper hull. These will be hooks for towing cables, and yeah, there's the towing cables. Um, and some more, probably latches for holding the cables in. And uh, that will be a step for going on the side of the vehicle to fold down so they can access the rear. I've got side skirts, so it's kind of a bit off here because you've got 22 and then up to 23, and then you've, you know, side skirts attached, and then they're attaching, attaching here, so ideally that should have been part 22 and then moving this on to part 23, especially if you're having to put the step on. So again, a bit of user initiative on the instructions on the, how you, which step you do first. But all of this can be painted and weathered before it's put on. Um, so modular construction, making it a bit more speedy and fun to do. Part 24, we're moving on to the mine roller. So you've got the roller wheels, 
um, the roller axles. You've got chains that are part of the construction. Part 25, 26 are the mine roller arms. And we've got some of the attachment bracketry for the mine roller to go on the front of the chassis. Got some photo etch parts here. Yeah, and there might have been some more I've missed throughout, but they'll be easy. They're, they're identified PE, A6, they're easily identified and numbered. So that part goes in there and the chains glue onto there. And if you're careful with construction, they should be fully movable and poseable. If you want to do it on a diorama, you can make an uneven surface and you'll be able to move it to that because these arms moved independent of each other. Right, step 29. So we are talking a serious construction here. This is us starting into the rocket holding device. So that builds up. Then we've got make four rockets. And then the rockets go in to the holder. Um, you've got options here. You can cut and remove that and affix photo etch, or you can just leave it as it is. It's up to you, it's up to the modeler. And some more photo etch pieces going on. This looks to be the holding device for the rocket thrown, uh, well, the rocket holder or launching device. Arms going in. Again, do not cement, so it should be movable and posable, which is fine. I'd imagine straight up and down will be stowed, and then canted forward will be operational. And then part 35 all coming together. Wow, that's an awful lot of steps. So you can see this is going to be a really, really in-depth build. And you're probably going to treat it in um, as maybe three or four different models. You've got the lower chassis, the upper chassis, the mine roller. And the rocket throwing device so you know that's four separate builds brilliant for someone that is wanting a big project so i'm just going to take the screws out as they come we have the upper upper hole sprue that presses now hobby boss uh, as well as trumpeter do a brilliant job of protecting their parts so first off you can hear it really nice crisp firm strong plastic we've got good beefy sprues for holding the parts on but reasonably fine connection points and where it matters there is no injection uh, ejection pin marks um, there is on some parts but on the parts that can be posed open there isn't so you've got internal detail to the hatches and then you've got all these little pins that need to be cleared off but these will be where the ejector pins have pushed this part out of the mold you know top notch the hobby boss um, i rate them very highly i enjoy building the kits the detail is really good and they do think about the modeler um, and how the modeler having to deal with ejection pins and stuff like that and reduce the number they use or put them in a way that means that they don't get in the way so plastic protecting the sides of the rear stowage cage um, stowage parts, hatches, shovels, and really, really nicely detailed deck. Now, I don't know with this vehicle if there was like a textured finish to it. I would have to do a bit of research to see, but that wouldn't be too hard to put on there. Um, obviously, you'd need to be careful not to cover the folded down grab handles, um, but ideal. You know, heel hinge detail, um, locking handle detail, fantastic. Really, really nice. Very crisp, very sharp dry brushing, highlighting, pin washes, this kit's going to take that no bother at all. Right, moving on to the next piece. So I'm going to leave this in the bag because there isn't just too many parts on this, but you should be able to see if I get the reflection off. This is the final drives and the front load guard covers. Again, beautiful crisp mouldings, lots of sharp bolt detail, hinge detail, excellent stuff really nice parts now we have a multiple screws here we've got four screws that come together to make up the mine roller I'll take one out okay so 
really nice detail on that, a solid molded part, very little in the way of a part in line around the whole circumference and that. We've got lovely cast, if the camera's picking that up, let's see if I can get it to focus on it, sorry it's shaking a bit. There we go. Are we focusing? Come on. Try and get more focus. There we go. Beautiful cast detail on that part. And then we've got beautiful details here and very, very fine um, tie down hoops here. Yeah, absolutely stunning part. We've even got a little bit of detail on the end of the plate where it's been cut off um, and machined. Yeah, top notch there. Okay, this is part of the rocket throwing device. Uh, lovely internal detail, good solid locating points for where the internal bracing goes. Very, very thin. I don't know if you can see the light showing through. So this is obviously molded. There is a few ejector pins, but they're on the surface and they will sand back. So you're not having to fill them. You just have to flush them down. So that's not a problem. Yeah, I think we'll get this one out of the bag. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm assuming this is like a rubbery type piece. It's been fastened in. You've got lovely bolt head details and then that lovely textured sinking in point where it's been fastened in. Minimal flash. Minimal burring on the sides of the parts. Minimal clean up means enjoyable build. Not easy build, but enjoyable build. So here's another part to that. So you've got another intern, two internal walls and some of the bracketry. Again, some of the sprues I won't take out of the bag. But you can see that the detail's really good. Now, this one I will because this is the rockets and the internal dividers. So we'll take one of these out. There's four sprues in this bag. So you can see that the complexity and the level of detail that's going to go into this build is, is quite significant. Again, Hobby Boss has given us protection for the parts. So if I gently take that off, I can wrap it up later. Look at the finesse that is on those small fine details there. You know, in the old days you'd replace that with a little bit of copper wire. You don't need to do that. So, so fine. You will need a very sharp and precise pair of side cutters to get those off without breaking them. But the connection points are so fine. It's really not going to be a problem. If I can get it to focus, of course. Use that hand. I'll try and get the focus. There we go. Uh, these are the rockets. Again, texture on the plastic, just like the real thing. Lovely raised detail where the details need to be raised. And the fins for the side, so, so thin. They're as thin as photo etch would ever be. No ejector pins where they need not be. A little bit there, but that's nothing that's not going to take a swipe the sand and stick or sort it out. The detail there is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Right, next sprue is uh, another sprue just with the axles and the side plates of the mine roller system. Again, I'll not take it out, but it's just the same as before. No ejector pins where you don't want them. Lovely crisp molding. Go together really well. That's the one thing I do find about Hobby Boss kits, they do tend to fit very, very well. Now, this is one we do want to have a look at because it is the arms of the mine roller system. And again, it's this lovely crisp plastic. So there are parts with detail on it, like surface detail. Very crisp. We've even got weld lines in there. I don't know if the camera will pick it up because it's obviously very fine, fine detail. No ejector pins. Well, there is a few on the rear side, but you're never going to see them. But beautiful detail. Yeah, really happy with that. Okay, track guards. Well, it's just a pair of track guards. There is 
one or two heavy um, ejector pin marks. To be honest with you, you'll never see them because they sit quite close to the top of the track run. Uh, you can fill them if you want, but it's not a problem. And quite plain on top. What detail is here is nice and sharp. You can see nice bolt details in there with the uh, track guard holders. And then obviously a few positioning holes for stuff to go on top of them. Right, side skirts, we'll have these out because they've got detail on them. Right, have a look at these. Oh, okay. Hobby Boss, you've knocked it out of the park again. Beautiful, beautiful detail. Very, very crisp, fine engraved panel lines. Lovely raised bolt heads, superb, superb texture. You could feel it under your finger. So this thing's going to take detail washes, paintings, dry brushings, you know, highlightings beautifully. Um, again, if we look at the tops of these stowage lockers, absolutely stunning detail on the grab handle hinges. We've got uh, like a checker plate or a diamond plate or grill on the side here. So it's going to take a wash beautifully if you dry brush it or wash it and then dry brush it you'll highlight the tops and then you'll have the darker color in the recesses it looks stunning yeah really really good and we've got some slide molded parts now i would think these look like they are the uh, smoke discharger canisters so one piece slide molded is absolutely fantastic yeah brilliant tracks you get four sprues of tracks i'm not going to take these out as i said when we're going through the instructions there's no ejector pins on them where they don't matter there is quite a lot of cleanup but if you get a really really good pair of um, sprue cutters it's very easy to cut right up to next to the track so you'll have no cleanup at all when you come to glue them together and you just i do them in runs of 10 glue the tent together next group of 10 glue them together with just the time you're extra thin once you get the acquired number you can then they're flexible enough to wrap around the whole of the running gear one word of advice is don't try and glue the tracks and put them on whilst you've already put the side skirts on because you will struggle so it's definitely an idea to do all the running gear first before you start constructing the top hull now we have a number of sprues in here and it looks like we've got three sprues all identical so I'll just take one out there we go so this is the puma sprues this will be a common sprue for all the puma family of vehicles so we've got the road spr the road wheel springs these are the hanging brackets for the side skirts we've got some stowage so we've got liquid containers We've got the axles here, we have halves of the recovery hooks, the bump stops, not quite sure what that is, it's probably something that goes on top of the, the vehicle, but I'm sure it would be in the instructions. We've got that step here that goes down on the side, hatches, spare track, we've axle end plates, it's really really nice if I can get that zoomed in. There we go, GPMG, absolutely stunning detail, very, very minimal bearing, easy cleanup, yeah, brilliant. As I said before, Hobby Boss produce fantastic kits. I think they're quite underrated because you never see many people raving about them, but they're up there, they really are up there with the rest of them. just quietly get on with it okay so last major sprue we've got the remaining parts for the stowage cage on the rear deck and then we have lots of small parts you know tow hitch uh, what's like exhaust ports uh, grab handles very very fine nicely molded so you probably get away using them rather than replacing them with wire um, yeah I'm not exactly not noticing exactly what all these parts are but you know they're obviously the small sort of greeblies as a lot of folk call them the small detail parts but they're beautiful there's another machine gun if we look at that get that to focus there we go absolutely stunning and here's the front of the 
um, smoke dischargers. You can see the individual smoke grenades in there. They would be a bright sort of bluey green colour. So that set against the cyanide grey, you know, you'd really be a, a really interesting small detail that would draw the eye into the vehicle and just create that little bit more interest. Yeah, really nice. Really, really nice. Fantastic. Right, if I turn the box around so I can reach it, let's have a look. So we have the top hole. So the front glasses plates, you can see that there. Beautiful detail where you've got inlays. You've also got raised detail with the grab handles and the areas for attaching the driver's periscopes around the driver's hatch. And then if you look on the rear of this now, when the Israelis got the Centurion from the British Army, first thing they did was chuck out the petrol engine, probably quite wise, and put in the diesel power pack out of uh, an M48 or a sort of M60 family of vehicles, and they managed to retrofit the rear deck to fit the Centurion hull. So that's why they've got this really quite interesting deck panels on compared to a British Centurion with the old Rolls-Royce meter engine in it. Beautiful detail, really crisply moulded, very, very fine, right down to the individual grab handles on the back of the engine. So again, the detailed painting, oh, you're going to really make the model pop. And what you find as well as a lot of the Israeli units, these small grab handles, they were all painted red to easily identify them. So if you go around the model and paint all these little details red, it really does make them pop. I've built quite a few IDF vehicles and that's that small detail painting that really sets them aside from other vehicles. Now, road wheels. Road wheels are road wheels, two-part road wheels. Got four sprues. Yeah, nicely detailed. So you've got the rear of the road wheel. Okay, drop that one on the floor. Rear of the road wheel, front of the road wheel. Really nice hub detail, really nice bolt detail. And you've got the detail on the reverse as well. You're never going to see it, but it's there. You know, it's fantastic. And then the hub caps are all beautifully detailed as well. And then we have very, very finely molded detail here. I'm not sure what that's for. I'm sure it'll be in the instructions, but it's really, really nicely molded. Lower hull. Big, beefy hull. There's no point taking this out of the bag because it's just a tank hull. Where there's raised detail, if I get it in the frame, where there's raised detail, it's there. Beautiful, crisp, it's going to take a wash perfectly. You've even got cut detail along there where the plate's been cut. You've got all the marking detail here on the side and really good connection points for gluing on the suspension unit and axles, final drive and front idler sprocket. And then we've got good detail on the back bolt detail and again substantial connection points where we're gluing on the towing brackets and such like road wheels separate piece road wheels I actually quite like these because you can paint them up paint the wheels up put them together bang you don't have to do any masking it's done they take a little bit of clean up cutting out the um, sprue in the middle and nothing that any modeler can't handle some more small detail bits, I'm not quite sure what they are, but you can see in the bag, really nice moulding, really nice detail. We have got slide moulded recovery uh, tow and wire um, crimped ends. We've got some lightning here that you're going to have to take the old um, Molotov pen to put the silver reflector on. Absolutely, look at the fine, fine connection points on those parts. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. You know, Hobby Boss is really knocking it out of the park. Really, really, really knocking it out of the park. And there's no there's no ejector pins on any of these parts. So very minimal cleanup. I would certainly say anybody want to build this kit and get themselves a decent set of side cutters. Glass, glazing parts, crystal clear. You can see that through my hand. Really, really sharp and clear parts. No problems there. So you've got the light units. And then this is obviously um, panels for optics and vision ports. We have, I'm not going to take this out, this is the photo etch. So a full sheet of photo etch. Again, 
lovely detail, lovely etching and really nice fine connection points so it should be easy enough to clean up. And on the other side we've got some lovely braided copper wire for the recovery cables and then we've got this really nice brassy bronze chain for the mine roller system. And then finally we have a huge sheet of decals. Now again I'm not going to take them out of the packet. I've built so many Hobby Boss vehicles. I don't have a problem with the decals. They're always in register and they're always quite thin and um, kind of a satin finish. So if you put them down onto a satin finish in the tank then they'll easily vanish over and blend into the surface without leaving um, that sort of telltale decal demarcation line where they're slightly erased from the surface. So they'll not be a bother at all. Um, yeah, I wouldn't have a problem with them. So there we go, what an expanse of plastic. Um, it's going to take a bit to build this, but a really, really interesting build. So what I'm going to do, get all this stuff back in the box, and then we'll get the camera back on me, and we'll sum up with some final thoughts on quality of the kit and what it's going to, what it's going to end up like. So there we are, Hobby Bosses. Reasonably new tool, uh, IDF Puma armoured engineer vehicle. Thoughts? Right, um, this isn't a kit for a beginner, I'll say that for it. Get, just get that one right out there. Hobby Boss build well, but they are part high or part heavy kits um, that you need to take your time for. So I would suggest if you're interested in this, go and get it, put it away in the stash get some slightly easier kits you know they can be hobby boss kits they can be any manufacturers but build up to a model of this size if you tackle it and you're not ready for it it's going to defeat you and it'll end up going on the shelf of doom and never getting finished on the flip side if you want a challenging build that you're going to end up with a really detailed and quite interesting model to be honest with you this is the kit for you it's it's going to take a time um, you're going to have to treat it as a number of different builds and bring it together but on my opinion is it's, it's a kit that has the quality and the finesse of the parts molded in styrene that you don't need to go running out and buying loads of aftermarket parts to make this thing you know uh, an amazing super build you can do a really high quality build straight out of the box you just got to take your time and, and build it you know nice and steady and then you put the extra detail in and it's it is crying out for detail work you know it's crying out for washes oil work dry brushing highlighting you know it's a model that you can do so much with as well you know you can do it in combat you can do it in oper you know operations you can do it in maintenance you know there's so many different things you can do with it but it's a kit that's going to take you a little while to build um, would i recommend it Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Hobby Boss have got a good reputation now. Certainly the modern kits they're producing, they go together well. The detail level is very high and you'll get bags and bags of enjoyment out of it. Uh, the price point for this kit is around about the sort of 55, 60 pound mark in Britain. And for, for that money, you'll get a massive, massive kit that is, to my mind, quite good value for money. You can go to other manufacturers and pay a little bit more um, for a very similar kit. Um, so yeah, I, I would say recommend it. Um, I would say if you're interested in it, go and get it and build it. This is something again, as I say with all my reviews, I really love to build and I really do want to build this kit but it's going to get put in the stash and, and be safe for a rainy day. I've got a few builds I, I want to do before. Um, however, if, if you guys want me to give it a go, you know, if I get maybe 50 comments or so saying build it, then well I'll build it for you. Um, that's up to you guys who are taking the time to watch it and get this far in my quite in-depth review. Um, I'm not going to waffle too much more. I, I'm really excited about the kit um, and I think it's going to be a fantastic kit. And when I do get it built, I will do as I did with the uh, Centurion um, Avery. I'll, I'll do a, a build review and actually come back and tell people how it's built and if there's any problems or things to watch out for. So there we go, that is Hobby Boss's um, IDF Puma AEV. 
Thanks if you've watched this far, I really appreciate it. If you've got any questions, stick them in the comments below. I always take the time to read them. I always appreciate anybody that wants to ask a question um, and I will respond um, as soon as I can to any questions. As usual, um, if you like the channel, you know, subscribe if you would, just give it a thumb up, you know, like the video, share it if you want, all those things, I, I appreciate it. It doesn't matter if you don't want to do it, it's fine, I enjoy making the videos anyway. But until next time, um, stay safe, happy modeling, take care.